What's your favorite scary movie? Wes Craven's The People Under the Stairs. By and large, the 1990s were a very successful decade for one Wes Craven. Not only did he leave the franchise that he started in about as good a place as you can ask for with Wes Craven's new nightmare, but he launched another one in the form of Scream, in which he wanted to kill the slasher genre. Instead, he ended up prolonging it and starting another boom period, with Scream lasting with an upcoming seven sequels, or well, seven movies total, six sequels. But today I'm going to be talking about a Wes Craven film that is not really talked about as much, and I think that's a bit of a shame. It's the people under the stairs, but I misspoke. Instead of saying I, I should have said we, because we are going to be talking about the people under the stairs, and by we, I mean my Life in the Movies co-host, my Life in the Movies podcast co-host, Jacob Martin. Jacob, take it away. Thank you, Ryan, for having me on your channel once again uh, for your Scary Mania series. It's good to be back on that series. Uh, I think last year you had me on uh, to talk about Videodrome from David Cronenberg. This time the movie is... The People Under the Stairs, released in 1991, directed by Wes Craven, the mastermind horror director behind such movies as Nightmare on Elm Street and Scream. Good to talk about this movie. I'd never seen it before. I had heard about it because I wanted to check out some more Wes Craven movies, especially after being such a fan of the original Nightmare on Elm Street and the Scream movies that he directed in his lifetime, Scream 1 through 4. This one takes an interesting approach. Uh, we follow... It's interesting talking about this. To be honest, it's better to know as little about the plot as possible. I'll just say it involves this kid. He is dealing with this... Uh, financial situation his mom's sick he's living in the ghettos uh there's this uh landlord that's you know, not really caring about the situation and wants the family evicted and so he teams up with a thief played by ving rames to try to get some money to steal some money from the landlord and then it just goes in a crazy crazy spiral from there and the plot of this movie is called the people under the stairs let's just say once you get to the people under the stairs it gets bonkers like it gets really bonkers it's really crazy because you know you have this scenario in the plot and when you look at it at face value it is one of the most ridiculous plots you'll ever see in your life but then you have a director like Wes Craven who does a really good job at making your skin crawl with how disturbing aspects of the plot truly is. Especially when you find out more about what's going on with the landlord and the situation that goes on at this house. It is some really freaky stuff. Uh, I've looked at different reviews online and people... You know, they, they, some people see this film as a satire and they put their own little uh, political slant on the film. I even read, they said, somebody said like the landlord is like a caricature of Ronald Reagan and I don't really see that when watching the movie because I don't think Ronald Reagan was that villainous. Uh, I wasn't around at that time, but he didn't seem that way to me when looking him up in the history books. <laughs> That's a weird comparison to make. But you have people have their different, differing views on the film. Yeah, I think there is some social commentary in the movie. Uh, especially, you know, we're, we're following uh, this black kid, uh, this black boy and this black family, and they're living in the ghetto. And I guess you could make commentary that a lot of, some of the plot is, like, racially motivated uh, with uh, the main, with the, the characters that are, that 
they're trying to break into and the character more disturbing implications of the plot I could definitely see that and I think that adds to how disturbing this is when you have these people that have this bad vendetta against people because of the color of skin and that does yeah it does rub me off the wrong way and that's what adds uh, how disturbing this movie can get because there are people that do act like this and it's really messed up maybe not to the level of the way Wes Craven presents in this movie being a work of fiction but still there's a bit of reality in this movie and it's very sad uh, there's some other disturbing stuff in here too like you look deeper into the plot and like children are hurt pretty bad too it's like oh some of the some of this movie is very disturbing and Wes Craven does like a really masterful job at like balancing how ridiculous this movie gets uh, with it being very messed up at the same time. Some really great tension in this movie. Uh, because I think because the main character were following a 13 year old boy. And the fact that he's the one who actually has to carry this movie. Which that's very impressive for one thing. That it's a, a, a child is carrying this uh, horror movie. But yet you follow his shoes. And you want him to get out of this situation. Because you don't want something bad to happen to a kid. But even though like the way he got about it was not a good reason at all but you still want but there's worse people than him that are trying to get him and you, you want him to survive and that, I think that's what makes this movie work is you want him to survive uh, Ving Rhames was pretty good in this movie as the thief uh, had some pretty memorable moments in there uh, in the scenes that he was given uh, the villainous characters of the movie, those actors, I mean, they do a good job at making you despise these people, especially the mother. Uh, you see the mother in this movie, and she's like, eh. That's, that's, that's crazy. Uh, she's a piece of work, I say, I'll tell you right there. Uh, I do like the, uh, the fact that most of the movie's set in this one location, the house, that the character is trapped in. So you start to familiarize yourself with all the locations of the house and see all the intricacies and everything about it because there's like passages and other things that lead to different things. and It's a very well put together movie and I was very satisfied with the payoff of this film. The payoff of this movie without diving too deep into spoilers is so rich richly rewarding so if you want a movie with a great payoff and people under the stairs I think my only I, I did have one small gripe with this movie yeah as disturbing as it gets sometimes uh, the villainous characters can come off unintentionally goofy now people do believe this is a satire I read reviews online so maybe the goofiness was intentional like there's just like the landlord character there's Things he does and some of the outfits he wears, like there's like this one suit that he wears when he's like in attack mode, and I cannot take I cannot take him seriously when he's in that costume. Uh, it it makes him look dumber than he actually is. But then again, he's not as intimidating as the other character, the mother character. So like sometimes I guess it can be a little jarring tone wise. But that might have been intentional if the film was trying to be a satire, as some people believe. To me, it's more of a horror movie foremost. There's goofy elements in the plot. And I've seen people argue, like, what the satire is. But I'm taking it as its own movie. Because I, I don't look too deep into stuff, especially on horror movies, unless it's, like, right in your face. Like, get out. Or uh, Candyman is another one, which both of those do that very well. But yeah, this movie is just a very suspenseful thriller horror movie. Uh, kept me engaged throughout. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of crazy sequences, twists and turns along the way. Uh, pretty likable main character. You want him to survive. You want him to get out of the situation alive. Some very disturbing stuff, and Wes Craven does a phenomenal job directing this movie. Uh, this is 
Uh, I think of all the movies I've seen, Wes Craven, besides this, I've only seen the original Nightmare on Elm Street and the four Scream movies he directed in his lifetime. And I think this is his hidden gem movie. Because you don't hear too many people talk about this one. And I think it's excellent. It's a very underrated film. Check it out if you haven't already. If you want to see another Wes Craven movie, I definitely recommend The People Under the Stairs. I will be giving this movie a four and a half out of five stars. So thank you, Ryan, for having me on your channel once again, talking about The People Under the Stairs. I'm sure longtime viewers of Ryan's channel will know that I've been on his channel a lot, talking about uh, being on the Life in the Movies podcast, and Ryan's on my channel where we do discussing DreamWorks. Uh, we're now reviewing Led Zeppelin. <laughs> Why do I keep saying Led Zeppelin? I meant to say Leonard Skinner. Every time I want to say Leonard Skinner, I want to say Led Zeppelin. I don't know why. But we review Leonard Skinner albums currently on my channel at the time of this video, and other things as well. Um, thank you all for watching this video. Give Ryan Cam some love. Subscribe to his channel if you haven't already. And Ryan, I won't hog up too much of your time. Uh, share your thoughts on this crazy little movie. Jacob's channel is linked in the description. Go give him a subscribe. He really does deserve it. Like he said in his portion, this movie works best if you don't know all that much about the plot. So I'm not gonna give away too much here. What you need to know is that there are uh, there are there's a young boy and an older man, the man of whom is played by Ving Rhames, who spot a house and they're like, "There's gold in that their their house," and so they're scheming to go and rob the place. It turns out, not only is that place occupied by the landlord of the tenant in which they both, in the apartments of which they both live. It also just so happens to have something pretty sinister, not just underneath the stairs, but in the whole house. This movie blew me away. I did not expect too much from it, but I was thoroughly amazed by what Wes Craven was able to accomplish with this. I was, I was bowled over by just what I thought the movie was going to be, and then what it turned out to be. I was legitimately surprised, and that does not happen with a ton of horror movies. The little boy is named Fool, yes really, and he's played by Brandon Quentin Adams, and he shines like a diamond in this movie. Not only does he just accept this plot head first, he reacts in a way that you would probably react if you were in a situation like this, and he doesn't back down. He sees the situation for what it is, and runs into it. I love the spirit of that. Leroy, the adult in the room, is played by Ving Rhames of Mission Impossible and Pulp Fiction fame. The family who lives inside the house are genuinely creepy, except for the daughter. You do feel sorry for her. But the man and woman, who are literally named man and woman in the credits, yes, really, are played by Everett McGill and Wendy Robbie, and they both just, they both carry their load, especially Everett McGill. He is just so much fun in this. And honestly, he's equal parts funny, but also menacing at the same time. It's a delicate balance, but McGill pulls it off. And Wendy Robbie is downright terrifying in certain scenes. Their daughter is played by A.J. Langer, and she just terrorizes this poor girl. Like, not a ton is shown, but you can just tell there's some abuse going on here. There is a pretty devastating scene in which she forces her daughter to, like, clean up the... clean up some blood, and I'll... I won't go too deep into what... what the blood is in relation to, but she has to clean up some blood, and then gives her a bath in, like, this scalding hot water, and... Just A.J. Langer's scream in that scene is genuinely disturbing. This movie could have so easily just been something along, like, the horror comedy route, or, like, something like later Nightmare on Elm Street. I'm not burying those movies, I'm just saying they got funnier and more tongue-in-cheek as those movies went on. It was what it was. But Wes Craven plays this totally straight and to the point, and it's all for the better. 
underrated gets thrown around quite a bit, but The People Under the Stairs is one of Wes Craven's more underrated and overlooked films. So do yourself a favor and go and watch it. It is genuinely better than you remember.